Um, I want to go back to a question you asked Jay Williams, man. It seems like months and months ago how many pods you've been putting yeah, out. Yeah, that's crazy. But it's only this it's season. It's literally like a, like a month and a half. Yeah, it wasn't like, that long even, ago at all. Yeah, it was like six weeks ago. Six weeks ago. But you asked him if he could delete one app. What app? From existence. Not from his phone. From existence. He said Instagram. Now, the analysis show on Instagram is doing very, very well. So don't delete that one. <laughs> I won't delete uh, But Instagram. if you could delete one app, what would it be? One app. I'm getting rid of the email app on my phone. Just I'm Just done with work. I'm done with work I'm emails. Done with work. <laughs> oh, so I can pick any app. Any okay. app, yeah, any app. Okay, can you hit the doo -doo 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 oh the Jeopardy doo -doo 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 music? I think it's about the. Let's take it. Take a little bit of time. Doo -doo 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 -doo. But <laughs> I don't know the whole song, I'm so let's hurry up. <laughs> uh, messaging. Okay, you're done with messaging. Yeah. That's like how 90% of the world communicates now. I know. You got to find me. Pigeons. You got to do something. <laughs> find me. FaceTime Somewhere, you? somehow. FaceTime. Like, and if I pick up, I'll pick up. If I don't, I don't. If you don't, you don't. All right. That works. Moving on in four quarters here. You and the family, you know, a lot of players, you know, get into the business side of things, but yeah. different business ventures, invest in different companies. Is there like a, a field, whether it's food or tech or... Something like that, that no, that's next? Farm, farms. Like, farms? Like, I already do a lot of things. Okay. You know, I'm not going to talk about, like, with the, our business venture on the, on the, on the pod. But no, like, you're not by names, but yeah. just like a field. No, but the field I, I want to go is farms. Okay. Farm, like, and, like. Like real ones, not Farmville, not the video game? No, like <laughs> real farm. By the way, something about the video games. Mm. That, I don't even know why I'm saying this right now, but I'm going to say it. The worst part about nowadays video games, have you ever been in a video game that they have the, the, the whole like trailer and it's like, oh, this is how the game is, and then you download it and it's a fake game? It's totally different. I have not had that. I, what anybody who's watching this podcast or is listening, I, there's no way they haven't had this happen to them. And I've stopped. I've All of a sudden, I don't play no more games. I don't download no more games. Like This is getting ridiculous, bro. I'm suing next time. Next time <laughs> no, next time I download another game, and that's not a game, and it's a fake game, and you guys are just like trying to trick me to download something. I'm suing. So TA won't be going into the video game venture not anytime what? soon. <laughs> Bro, think like, and this is mostly on YouTube. But uh, going to what I was saying, farms. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would not like. I would love to have a farm okay. either here in Greece or something like that. All right, two more quick ones. Four oh, quarters man. presented by Carbless. Uh, this one's off the rails. I got to read this specifically. We got this from someone in, our, in, our, in my office. Would you rather fight a horse-sized duck, so a duck the size of a horse, yes. or 100 duck-sized horses? I'm going to let you so, think about what yeah, this looks like. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to visualize. What, I think I've heard this question before, but I never thought about what the... So I'm not fighting a duck that's the size of a horse. Like it's, It looks scary, like almost terrifying. I'm envisioning like. a giant rubber duck. So it's yeah, not no, because scary you're, you're, to me. But what if it's a duck that... Have you ever seen a duck chase people? No, around? ducks are mean. Exactly. So I... So I, I like to golf, and you if you get anywhere near geese, which I know like I'm the same thing, but they're yeah. the same thing. Those things are... They got teeth. They come at you. Exactly. Mm -mm, not no. for me. But... Duck, I mean, I, can, I think I can run. 100... You know 100 could fill the whole studio. <laughs> the whole studio. <laughs> no, not neither. 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 I'm good. So, uh, top three uh, favorite desserts. They're mostly Greek, though. I want to let you picture all that. Okay. Oh, actually, no. Two Greek and one American. Okay, so I'm a big fan of croissants. European. You know, I'm a European. I'm a big fan of croissants in general. Second uh, second dessert. It, now, this is Greek. Uh, okay, it's called the Galactoburiko. But that's like, I, like I, when I touch down in Athens, that's the first thing that, uh, that I get. Like... It's so crazy that people know that this is my favorite dessert that I always have, like, my fans who send me, like, uh, like everywhere. They would, they would send me. I remember when we won the championship, I went home, and I, and I had, like, four or five boxes just from the random people, like, in my doorstep. It was, it was crazy. So that's my favorite dessert, Galatoburgo. And the third one is my third one. I'm in between, I'm in between two. Can I say both? Yeah, or? give me both. Okay, so. The one, the first one is Ameri like I don't know if you can call it. Amer it's considered American. It's like a, a banana pudding. Top notch, top notch. I am like, oh. I have a great day. Like if I have a banana pudding, I really have a great day. Like it's not even over uh, exaggeration. And then the other one, I'm between that and uh, 
It's the other one's Greek. It's uh, parotoka and maggi. It's ice, ice cream. But uh, I don't know how to call it. Masticha. I don't you know what masticha is. Mm-hmm. Please don't know what masticha is. You're going to be amazed. It's, a, it's a, something incredible. So you guys can, you should try this. Parotoka and maggi. Remember, Thanasi said, on Thanasi's show. Welcome to another episode of the Analysis Show. Man, this has been crazy. I've been, uh, I'm on the road, actually. But uh, you guys have been amazing. Also, everybody started posting the Robin Lopez uh, interview. Uh, it's, it's on autopilot now. Like, you guys have been amazing. I think, uh, and I have more stuff in store for you guys, but you guys have been amazing. And no joke, when I started doing this, I felt like, Okay, so people are gonna people are gonna like it. Are people gonna like the guests I bring? Are, are they gonna find it interesting? Are they gonna find it interesting the way I uh, approach things? But uh, I'm happy. I'm happy. You know, it's playoff time. Is uh, hopefully we could get it done. You know, but man, I have somebody special here, and special in many ways because uh, his journey has been special and intertwined with our journey as a family. Uh, but before I say that, please, please, please. You know, subscribe to the subscribe to the podcast. Uh, wherever you get your podcast from, Apple, Spotify, everywhere. It's everywhere when it comes to audio on YouTube. Subscribe, subscribe to the channel, uh, and please, you know, like, comment, share, hit the notification button. You know, leave comments, negative, positive. <laughs> I love every feedback. You know, that's how you get better. But I gotta give it the intro. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta bring him in. Bring him in from Massachusetts and Syracuse University. The 2014 NBA rookie. He wore number five for the Milwaukee Bucks. Michael Carter Williams. MC Dub. Appreciate you. MC Dub. Man. First of all, thank you so much for coming to the show. Thank you for having me, bro. (laughs) Thank you for having me. (laughs) You know, Okay, what what have you been up to now? Well, like, what's man? I've been I've been up to a lot, bro. Like, first things first, I've been being a dad more, which has been unreal you know what I mean being able to just yeah. be at home you know with the kids driving them to school I find myself I'm like man this is what this is what a stay at home dad feels like there's a lot of work but nah I've, I've been I've been doing my thing bro I've been doing a lot of off the court you know ventures with you know business uh real estate you know I've been talking to Dylan a bunch yeah, 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 yeah. So I've been I've been doing my thing bro I be I meet with him every day I'm I'm talking to different people from you know, private equity firms to VC firms to real estate. So I'm gonna do my thing, bro. I've been I've been happy, bro. I've been happy as hell, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. But you you always had this charisma and really being talented, like not just on the court and off the court, and and you know bringing people together and kind of like navigating your way through uh, even now through business now. For real, yeah. Um. Okay. So what do you what do you think about this NBA season? This season. It's it's a crazy season, bro. Like from teams winning to teams losing, you know, people playing well. Like you got, you got guys like I mean, you look at like Jalen Brunson, yeah. you look at um, Anthony Edwards. Like those dudes is like they they top like ten in the league now. So like it, the the league's been crazy up and down. You got you know new MVPs every week. Like it's it's been a wild year, and the titles up for grabs. So yes, like, yes, yes. it's been a dope year. Do you um, do you have a Who's your who's the who are the point guards you play point right? Who 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 are the point guards that you like? Ah, this is top my top five in the league. Like point guards, you you look at it and you go like, oh, okay, this is. This I is mean, high. I think you got to start with Shea, right? Yeah. He's, he's been he's been killing this year, um, and it's still the guys like you know the guys that have already proven themselves too, the Steph, yeah. um, Dame. I mean, it, and and then what do you count as a point guard though? Like, are you throwing like, are you counting Luca as a point guard? Mm. Like all these interchangeable dudes. Like, are you counting those as as PG? So it's a it's a tough question, but yeah, I mean. Okay, so let's do this. Let's take let's take the superstars out. Let's take the the Luca, Dame, uh, Trey, Steph. Uh, who else? Um, what about Trey? Trey's yeah, another one. That's yeah, good. and. All these guys out. Who who do you go like from any other teams? Like you like their game? Like okay, he's solid in, in the mid level, even lower level. Like the 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 teams. Like did you see, that's a good question. And it could be top three. It doesn't have to be top five. You yeah, know, I'm I'm trying to think. I mean, I I can only think of the like the big big names right now. 
I don't know, bro. It's a good question. I don't, I don't, do you I don't like, know. Let's say, example, do you like uh, Tyrese Maxey? Tyrese Maxey's tough. He's good. Right. Yeah, he can and, and he can he can he can explode in the playoffs. Yeah. Do you uh, do you like let's say Darius Garland? Darius Garland, right. another one. That's another one they could heat up. That's a good one. Those two are tough. Those those two mm. are real tough. How, how do those guys <laughs> translate to your game? Because your game was everything. Like I feel like you one of those uh not multi purpose, but you just like used to do everything. You used to play deep. I I I had games that we watch. You have like nine steals, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. I mean, I think I was trying to impact the game so yeah. much, right? Like I was trying to get into, I was trying to get to the rim, trying to pass the ball. Yeah. Couldn't knock down a shot for my life, but you know, oh, you, yes, you could. Nah, 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 nah. For a while, I mean, for a while. I mean, down, shoot, <laughs> maybe not shoot crazy threes, but twos. Yeah, no, 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 no. Twos like pull up, pull ups, yeah. pull ups, and twos. You yeah. know, I, you know, I was inconsistent here and there, but like for the most part, I was getting to the rim, trying to make plays for my teammates, and trying to affect the game in other ways, right? Like that's that's the like we're gonna have every team's gonna have their scores, shoot the ball yeah, like yes. x amount of time. Like it's just a matter of you know how can I affect the game in other ways. So you know, once I kind of had that in my head, I was just you know that was on autopilot for me. Man, do do you think? Uh... I mean, just like the coming from like a family of athletes and, and sports. I mean, both of your play, parents play basketball. They play basketball. Mm -hmm. Yep, all my parents played. Yeah, my <laughs> stepfather played. My dad played. My mom played. So you know, I grew up just similar like you. All my yeah. brothers, all my brother and sister played. We all played D one, and then like you know, from from a young age, it was just all basketball in the house. Like we watching basketball on TV. At the end of the day, like we just we live basketball. Similar to y'all, very similar to y'all. I mean, of course, y'all y'all. Yeah, got look, the, but I'm saying like. <laughs> Just the love for the game, though, oh, right? Oh, yeah, love for the game. Like, super locked in on hoop all day. Man, do you – so, obviously, would you, you would go back and work out with the, with the fam? The of fam? course. Yeah, right in the backyard. We had the pavement in the – we had the cement in the backyard with the hoops. We was hooping. Every every day was a workout. Like, a couple of my friends, we used to come down, and they used to get the workout in for the yeah. summertime, too. We used to go over to this local college, and we used to lift, run, whatever. So, it was – oh, man, like – to, to see my, I think that's why my brothers got to, you know, kind of, and my sister got to where they were because they saw me outside with my stepfather every day, just doing drills, doing drills, and then they would, you know, do the same thing. Man, did the so like you did, would, would they give you advice like when you play games oh, and sure, and that, that that was the best thing for me because, like with my household, there was no such thing as like only offense, only get shots. Like if I had a good offensive game and I didn't play no defense going home, that was a long car ride home, right? Like you ain't you you didn't take you didn't care about the defensive end, like respect the game. Like it was it was it was it was intense. You sit in the front or sit in the back of the car? I was in the back. I was in the back. Mom Dukes and my, my, my stepfather <laughs> in the front. And there there was some long there was some silent ride home. Mm. Like it it was tough. May I uh it was okay. You went to Syracuse, right? How, how did you go to Syracuse? Were you like, was that your, like, that's my dream? That's my, I want to become an alumni for Syracuse? Nah, my, like, I mean, I wanted to go to Villanova. I went to, ah. I went to visit to Villanova, um, went there. I was like, that was when they had the, they was playing the four guards. Yes. Like, so, so my mind was focused. I'm like, man, I need to be there. The guard plays crazy. Like, I need to be over there. So I went to go take my visit. Um, and I watched practice, I, you know, went, went all around campus. And then Coach Wright, I was like, you know, I'm ready to commit today. But I was only a sophomore, though. I was, I was, I was okay. like, I wasn't a junior or senior yet. So I was like, I'm ready to commit today. And he's like, well, um, we're going to take, we're going to start, we're going to finish recruiting the class above you, the junior class. And then we'll start, you know, we'll come back to you and you can commit. So like two weeks go by, a dude that was in my class committed there. To Villanova, so I was pissed, bro. I was hot. I was like, you just told me that. I was like, nah. So then I went to go take my visit up to Syracuse. I was like, I'm staying in conference, and I'm going to Syracuse. So like, that's that's really that was my main motivation. But of course, I built my relationship with with G Mac and yeah. Coach Hopkins and Bayheim. Like, they was all great that side too. So I was happy with my decision at the end of the day, because you know that really prepared me to get to the league. Yeah. Did you did you do all for you? Like, did you go all for you, or mm -mm. you just like? Mm -mm. I I, did, I went my first year. I didn't play at all. Like I, I didn't like it was. It was tough was for it? me. Was Man, I was pissed, bro. Like I, I wanted to leave. I told my parents, like, yo, I'm out of here. Like, oh my, I was just McDonald's All American. Yes. And then I go to Syracuse, and I didn't get no burn. But the thing was, 
we ended up we was like 30 and 3 that year we was mad nice so i didn't have no room to really like wiggle really yeah like we was getting we won like 20 games in a row but i was always you know like i was always cheering on the sideline like i was always encouraging my teammates thinking you know telling them what i see on the floor like i never brought it to them so they was always they felt my pain because like i never let it affect the team right so but like like behind closed doors man i was hot like I remember one day I was like, Bayheim came up to talk to me, and I was like, yo, don't even talk to me. And, like, Coach g Mac's face just went bright red. Like, he was a tomato. <laughs> he was like, yo, you can't talk to coaches like that. But, bro, 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 I was so mad. Like, I went to – we were playing in Providence, and the whole family was there. The first time me playing for Syracuse, we're playing – I'm in Providence. I get in the first half. Like, I did well. I came out, like, four minutes, four minutes into me playing. Didn't touch the floor again, bro. That was the most embarrassing thing. But, like, that was the first time, like, I really felt, like, true adversity, like, in basketball. So, yeah. like, it taught me, like, damn, how am I going to respond now, right? Like, yeah. am I going to be the first one in the gym, last one to leave? And, like, me and Coach G Mac and Coach Hopkins, like, that was our routine. Like, I was always, you know, working out, working hard, and it prepared me for the next year. And then at the, my sophomore year, we went crazy, went to the Final Four, and then I got drafted. Man. Y'all know, y'all know what number I got drafted. Yeah, yeah. All you gotta do is watch Giannis's movie, and you'll know what number I got drafted. But you can tell him again what number you got drafted, man. It was eleven. It was eleven. It was eleven. So one one, man. Okay, and you get drafted. You go to Philly, right? Mm -hmm. And like, how was how was it that? Like, did you did you know how was the draft process for you? Did you know you was going to Philly or no? I didn't know I was going to Philly. Yes. Um, I got invited to the green room, but I was nervous. Like I, I was like, yo, like what happens if I'm in the green room and like, I didn't get drafted and the camera just like pans over to me, like keep not getting drafted. That was my, that was my biggest fear of just having the camera just keep panning over to me when I didn't get drafted. So I was like, do I even want to be in the green room? But obviously like, ain't nobody going to turn down the opportunity. So I was just always with my agent. Like I was like, yo, I can't. I, I got to get picked. I got to get picked. Are you sure I'm going to get picked? Like, me and him was, like, back and Wait, forth. What team did you work out for? Honestly, I thought I was going to get drafted by Phoenix. They were, like, four or five at the time. But, like, they asked me to – I had a workout there. I did really well. They asked me to come back for another workout. I did really well. So, I'm like, man, like, they asked me to come back to a workout. And I had done, like, 13, 14 workouts already. So, I was right. like, man, I was tired. But um, I thought I was going to get drafted by them. I, n I never knew I was going to get drafted by Philly, though. I don't even think I worked out for Philly, if I can remember. I don't know. So, okay. You go to Philly. How did, how did they embrace you? How did they welcome you in Philly? Like, how was you? It was great, bro. I mean, I was 21, bro. I didn't really know what was going on. Like, I was like, you know, this is a this is a lot. Like, there was media. There was, you know, obviously people were, you know, embracing me. Like, I love Philly, bro. Like, I love the people there. Like, I love the food there. Like. It was just a, a whole vibe, like, every day something was going on, like, and, you know, it was it was love. It was cool. It was love. It was love. It was, uh, well, How many games did y'all guys won that year? We won, like, nine, 21, 19. Oh, you, oh, yeah, I remember. You was got you and the Bucks. You and the Bucks were kind of fighting, like, <laughs> falling down. We were, like, we were so – I mean, it was – we were set up to fail, bro. Like, we, no, we had, no, I had new teammates like, every week. Were you week. guys maybe the beginning of the process? Were you guys at the beginning of the process? We were, we were, we were first stage of the process. The process, man, and uh, no, no, and now like, now that I think about it, you know what? When I came to the states, I was I played for the '87ers, mm -hmm. so I remember I would come and watch the games, and I played for like the affiliate of you guys, and I would come watch the games, and I remember about anytime Giannis was in in the uh, in Philly, I'd come watch him and see you guys play. And I remember uh, Giannis was like, man, we, we we have like 12, 13 wins. We're trying to win more games and other things. I'm like, damn. At the time, it felt crazy. I was like, okay, you guys are winning. But then I understood that like, it was 82 games. I was like, 14 wins? And it was like, four, on the, it was the game of like 40-something. I was like, man. Bro, and you would think like some teams were like, like there was games where I'm like, yeah, like they're not going to go crazy on us. Like, you know, they they looking over here like, you know, we got nine wins. So, like, we know they're going to come in lazy. We try to jump on them early. Like, yes. fourth quarter hits, they start turning up raps. Like, we were just taking L's, bro. Like, we lost 26 straight, bro. 26 straight. Like, I was like, 
I don't I was losing my mind, bro. We lo- we lost 20, 26 games straight, like as a like hitting the rookie wall. Like I, I had a lot of usage that year. Like I was playing. You did early. win rookie of the year, bro. No, no, no. Yeah, I know, but I can just remember me being like I was taking like. You know, you have film, and then you you go on to the bus. Like I was taking like fifteen minute naps in between that time. Like it was crazy, bro. But I'm thankful I had it though. That Dang, was a dope year. So like, okay, you win the rookie of the year. Did mm-hmm. you know you was gonna win the rookie of the year? Did you feel it like? Yeah, I, I knew. Like at a certain point, I knew. Like you know, it was it was tough. Me and Victor it was close race, but I felt like you know towards the end. I don't know. It was tough. It was close, but I think I won so many rookie of the months. Like I was like, there's no way I could. Yes. So, but I, even going in, even going into my rookie season, I knew I had a, a big opportunity to play a lot of minutes. And I was like, man, like I could really win rookie of the year. And that was when nobody, you know, thought I could, you know, win yeah. it. So I knew from the beginning, if I had the opportunity, I'll be able to do well. Yeah. And not speaking of rookie of the year, like you saw Vic probably want to win this, this year, you know? And, uh, absolutely. <laughs> like, no question. <laughs> He's nice, yo. Nah, he's different. Did you watch him play? What you think? Oh, like the things he's able to do at this age, at you know his rookie year. Come on, bro. Like he, they do the comparisons on his like defensive stats compared to the other defensive player of the year stats, and he's killing those. Like, nah, he's. Is this guy gotta start winning? Yeah, that that's gonna come though. Like yeah. as soon as they surround him with some, you know, with some more veterans and some more, you know, pieces as they build. That's going to come because he's, he's nice, bro. Like, dudes is not even attempting layups on him no more. Like, fast breaks, they pulling it out. Like, I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, my God, that's so true. That's so true. Uh, I was going to ask you who's, who you think is going to be the next superstar, but I probably you're probably going to say it's him. It's got to be him. It's got to be him. I mean, him and, and I, I really think Anthony Edwards, too. Like, yes. He, 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 gonna, yes. He's, he got the Ant, star bro. quality, bro. Star, this is on them, them two, like. And it's funny, and he has this. Hey, he got the charisma. He yeah. got, the, you know what I mean. He got the swag. Like, and his game is crazy. Like, I don't know. You know, I've never. Seen, I mean, I haven't been in the gym with him. But they say he work, works too, works hard. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I mean, you, you, yeah, you don't, you don't get that nice unless you work like, like real hard. I mean, you've seen it with Giannis. Like, yes. Like, I remember when I was in Milwaukee. Like, it was every day. Like, me, me and him was was lifting. We was, you know, night school every day. Yeah. Like we was, we was doing our, we was, he was hooping, bro. Like I remember, and I remember like when I first realized, like man, like he about to really take over the league. It was one day in the summertime. It was me, Jabari, and Giannis, and we was all playing once. And like Jabari and Giannis start bickering back and forth, like yeah. like they would call a foul and the other one would call a foul, and I got pissed, bro. I was like, yo, bro, like. We need to play ball. Like, no more calling fouls. Like, nobody calls fouls. No more. Like, yeah. like I was like, if anybody calls a foul, bro, like, we just not playing no more. Like, I was pissed. I snapped on them both, right? So, but the thing was, bro, once I said that, them two turned into two animals, bro. Like, Shout out JP. <laughs> bro, I'm playing against them. They low in their shoulder. Boom, boom. I'm like, yo, I probably shouldn't have said no fouls. <laughs> They, and then they st- they went started going at each other. But then I like I started watching like practice and stuff like that. Like they were like, I remember one day Giannis got fouled and they were like fouled. And he was like, no, no fouls. Like I need to make that get back. And I was like, yeah, like, like he he really on like. And he was like, man, this this he was like Mike this summer. I remember he told me I didn't see him for a while and then I saw him and he was like, yo, I'm taking over. And I was like, yeah, it's it's a, it's a wrap. It's a wrap for the league. It's, it's a Oh man, that's it's crazy. I wanna before I wanna ask you then about them, like how practice was, but uh but I wanna before we leave Philly, I wanna ask you something about Philly, man. And okay. Like, what do you think did you like okay, who was like the top like who's the the, the legend in Philly? Is it Dr. J? Is it Allen Iverson? Is it like Char- like who yeah, it's definitely AI. He's definitely it's, he's like Dr. J. Obviously, he gets a lot of respect walking around. Like it's Dr. J. But Allen Iverson's like he's the heart and soul of the city for real. Like he 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 the he the superstar. He the superstar. He the superstar. No <laughs> doubt. He going like he's did, Philly. Did you see the Did you see the thing with the statue? <laughs> bro, <laughs> Beyond, what's your honest like? What's your honest like reaction to it, bro? They gotta redo that. Like we got like. <laughs> they, got, they need a do-over 
Because that little ass statue, bro, come on, bro. Like, I respect AI. I, I love AI. It's respect that goal. they like, did the statue. I, no, it's I'm respectable like, that they did, but they, they got to fix it. That's too small, bro. You see the Shaq, like, every like any, everybody else, anybody else, Dirk statue. Like, he need Kobe. one of them. Yeah, he need one of them. He need one of them. Mike. Yeah, he need one of them for sure. Like He need one of them. Yeah, no, but... Um, Again, you know how you saw how he handled it. He was really happy about it. Nah, too. he's like, always grateful though. Yeah, he's good. Boy, one, I love that. About one thing I like about Allen Iverson, like a lot of dudes go on podcasts and you know talk crazy about this athlete and this athlete. Yeah. Like, he always give credit to like the current players that are playing right now. Like, he gives a lot of grace, a lot of compliments, yes. which is dope. Which is dope. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm. I was thinking about. It. I think I saw him in uh in Shaq's uh, podcast. Shout out to Shaq. I, I try to get. I'm trying to get him on on Tonalis. Hopefully, I get him in. But uh, it was crazy that he was he was saying some things. You guys gotta go watch it. But he was saying like, he talk about Luca. He loved Luca. He loved my other guys. Game. He always gives props, which is, you know, you don't see that always from uh, people who yeah, are not playing no, this era. Right. Yeah. But I love that about you. You're so right. Like. It's crazy. Would you Would you stay in Philly? Where were you living? I stayed right on uh, Presidential Boulevard. So right, yeah, no, no, it's not downtown. It's like it was right next to the old practice facility. So it was right, right next to that uh, Fridays that like Allen Iverson used to be. He used to go there like every every Saturday or Sunday or something like that. Used to be packed out, bro. But it was right there, yeah, right there, right on, right next to the old practice facility. And then, uh, yeah, oh yeah, and then okay, so you play for them, and how do you how do you end up in Milwaukee then, bro? That's the biggest mystery in my career till to this day. How do you end up in Milwaukee? I don't know, bro. I won rookie of the year, then got traded. I still, I'm not, I, 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 process, I, ain't, I can't answer that question. But no, I mean. You got traded to Milwaukee? I got traded to Milwaukee. Um, For who? It was, a, it was a pick. It was like a mm-hmm. top, top five pick. I think it ended up being Markel when he went to Philly. I think that was I think that was oh, the pick, like okay. right yeah, um, but yeah I mean Philly was I mean um Milwaukee was cool bro like obviously us getting you know going and going to the playoffs you know meeting Giannis meeting y'all like I I right away turned into a winning team and going to the playoffs right away at this day and eight the year after right right yeah I mean it, I got traded at the at the um halfway through the year mm-hmm. so when I got traded um. Yeah, we, it was it was dope, bro. Like we we made a playoff push, we were you know, we were balling. Like we had a squad, we had a we had a real good team. Um, who, was on, who was on the team? I thought it was me, John Henson, um, OJ Mayo, Giannis. OJ. Um, I think Bayless was on our team. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Steve Novak came the next year. He might have, I don't know, but yeah, that, we had we had a good team, bro. We was hooping. Um, Greg Monroe. K Vid was on the team. Yeah. So we was meaty. Yeah, K Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was when he was just coming on the scene. He was he was don't tell Giannis, but he was honestly our best he was our best player like for a couple of years. <laughs> I, believe, I believe he was hooping. You. I believe you. So okay, you go to that team. How how's what's the how's the atmosphere? What's your feeling for you? Like getting um, to the team? I mean, it was a process for me. Like I didn't know really know mentally how to deal with being traded. Like that was that was tough for me. I was like I kept feeling like I do have a great opportunity and like this is a better team, a better yeah. maybe a better situation for me, but I like the I, the idea of them like portraying me after everything that we we went through. Like I was in meetings where like I was a part of the process. Like this is what we doing for the process, blah 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 blah. Like yeah. them bringing me up. Like I'm not even asking. You know what I'm saying? Like so for me it was like I got like I felt like I was stabbed in the back. Like I didn't know who to like who I could trust. You I know just what I mean? found out. Bro, it was like five minutes before the deadline. I thought I was like, I wasn't even thinking about it, bro. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, like, we'll probably make moves, get trades. And then my agent calls me, and I'm like, what? Like, it was like five minutes before the trade deadline. He was like, oh, they're trading you to Milwaukee. I was like, Milwaukee? (laughs) I'm going to live in Milwaukee, and you got to leave tomorrow. I'm like, bro. So that's how I found out. I I was riding in the car with a couple of my homies. Got the call and I was like, "Yo, I just been traded to Milwaukee, bro." How uh, how would they feel? How they were know? like, "Man, I mean, it's a better team, better." Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that we were just like we were just so used to being, you know, all of us being in Philly. Like 
I like, but you know, things change quick. And it's the NBA, brother. Mm. That's the NBA for you. Okay, so you go to you go to Milwaukee, the atmosphere, you come in, you know, uh who was your coach at the time? J Kid. J Kid. Kid was a coach, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I know like you definitely got the point guard, point guard uh influence. Yeah, I mean, like I will one th- one thing I will say about J Kid, like he has a a, a an interesting perspective just because of he's played the game so long and his mind is so sharp in hoop, right? Yeah. Like I can just remember, you know, in like in game situations where he would say, you know, look for this, look for this, look for that. And it would be like, it would be on point. So I think of that from that perspective. And it was a first year coach too. Um, so he was still trying to figure out, you know, how to coach, you know, how to deal with players, how to do all that stuff. So like, I think him going through that, me going through my process of like, you know, being traded, coming into a new situation, you know, being coached by him, like it was, it was, it was tough at times. It was like, I felt like there was a lot of turmoil between him and I. Mm. So it was, it was a, it was a tough, bro. It, it wasn't easy, bro. Milwaukee wasn't an easy process. Well, well, for me. Why turmoil? Like, I just, bro, I don't know, bro. Like I just, then me and him could never, like, we could never get on the same page. bro. Like we could never, like we'd have film sessions, me and him going back and forth. Um, just about little stuff, bro. Little things like, you know, him telling me I was playing buddy ball with Giannis. Like, just like things that, like, I'm just like, yo, I don't know how to respond to this. Like, I don't know. And and it, and like, look, I was young. I was 22 at the time. Like, dealing with my own situations. Like, yeah. I take accountability for the things yeah, that yeah. I may have done back then too. To for him to be like, yo, this kid maybe not has his head on right. But like, yeah. we just couldn't. We couldn't. We couldn't figure it out, right? And that led me to. Yeah, and bounce to Chicago. <laughs> but wait, okay. But you guys got to have a great year. You mm-hmm. go to the playoffs. Who do you guys play in the playoffs first? Right? Chicago. Chicago. Off the, rip, okay. off the rip. We was down We was down early. We started coming back a little bit. Um, actually, game, I think it was down one. We was down 3-0, I think. And, we, yes. and then we won two. The second game, two, I played really well. I had like 25, 9, and 7 that game. I was yeah. hoping. And then... They were smart too. They were like, "Okay, it's three two. We can't let them have momentum. It's game six at our place. They just come out physical, like just like oh, yeah, elbowing us. Yeah, remember yeah, us? Yeah, That's right. some done. Levy punches me yeah. in the mouth. My teeth, my teeth split. Yeah, I was hot. Yeah. Um, I still owe Dun Levy for that. No, nah, no, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. But know. that was when Giannis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giannis yeah, hit him. It was that game. Yeah. So like. They, they, were, they were smart. They came in physical. They got us rattled out our game. They ended up blowing us out. They killed us. Um, there was our more, emotions were more experienced. Yeah, yeah, they were like, more. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, they were smart. They were smart. They they definitely were. They had, they had a squad, though. That was Jimmy, D. Rose, Joe Kim. It was, they, had, they, they had a team. They had a team. I mean, did, I, mean I, don't, I don't know if uh, that's like – I think the rivalry between Milwaukee and the Bulls, and I don't know if you want to call it a rivalry, but – they they cold city, so I, you guys call it like something, you know. Oh, we used to when we used to play in Milwaukee, there used to be way more Chicago fans there. Like, yeah, like we, even we felt like both our game, all our games were home, um, away games. Yeah, like that I mean, even in but, the playoffs. But uh, at the same time, like I felt like this started earlier. Like, yeah, yeah, like, no, for sure, hundred percent. And then uh, like yeah, that, no, that that yeah. time, and and to be honest with you, I feel like those those people in Chicago that they come in and they watch the Bulls. I think like when we play at home. They put on another jersey and they become like Milwaukee Bucks. Like, no, no, seriously. <laughs> like, you know, it's other team that when they play, we play Chicago, they nah, Chicago. Yeah. But when we play Wisconsin, they Wisconsin. Like, we ride, you know, we rocking. Yeah. So, I like that. And it's vice versa. When we go to Chicago now, there's a lot of, a lot of, I'm sure. A lot of, a lot of Milwaukee, 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 Wisconsin, teams. you know? Yeah. Which is good. Cities are close. It's great to play. And it's great for both cities to have great teams, good teams, mm-hmm. you know, at the same time. So, but okay. But which one would you say is your favorite memory? Like, Favorite memory? I mean, obviously, my first game was crazy, bro. Like, that memory for me was, like, unreal. We played in Miami Heat. Almost got a quadruple double. Like, that game was... Tell me your stats. Tell me, tell me your stats. I, I had, like, 25... 25 points? 25 points, 12 assists, 7 rebounds, and 9 steals. And 9 steals. I, was right. the I didn't know what was going on. Like, I just, I think that was just because, like, I was young, just playing free, like, not yes. not thinking about anything. Like, it was, that was probably one of my favorite moments. When we beat um, Golden State when they was, like, 23-0, and 0, that was a crazy, that was a crazy moment. Just because, like, we all had so much confidence that we was going to win. Like, we was, like, we really believe, like, oh, we're going to be the team, you know, be the team that beats them to stop their streak. But that's, 
they they were they were crazy. They were so nice, bro. That was so like I never had to be so locked in on every possession playing against a team in my life like that. Like they were crazy. It had to be no wasted positions, no wasted positions mm -hmm. at all. So I got I got a really 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 serious question for you, bro. Cheesesteak or cheese curd? Cheesesteak. Cheesesteak for oh, Philly. Oh, cheese curd for Milwaukee. I gotta go to I gotta go with the cheese steak. I'm a big <laughs> cheese steak guy, I can't lie. Them Philly cheese steaks is smacking. It's good, they're good, huh? I gotta try them. I gotta I gotta give him a chance, bro. I gotta give him a chance. It's okay. Now, Lenny and Curry played in Orlando, mm -hmm. right? How was that for you? Like playing I was like Orlando, Florida, was, like yeah. Orlando for me was like a a breath of fresh air, bro. Like, when I came to Orlando, it was like a whole new start for me. Like, I had things going on in, you know, in my life yes. that were that were tough. Um, you know, I got released from Houston. First, my first my my fiance left me with with our baby. Caught me doing some dumb some dumb shit. But yeah, I know it's a lot of info to unpack. Whoa, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. A lot of info to lay a lot of information to unpack. I went through a tough, tough, tough thing, bro. Like. My my girl left me, my fiance left me with the baby to California. And a week later, I get released from Houston. So now I'm like the worst at the worst stage of my life, like deep, deep depression. I like ain't oh, don't want to talk to nobody, no nothing. So I um I'm feeling like how do you how bro, it was it was bro, it was like bro, it was it was like rock bottom for me. You know, when life changes for you, yeah. like you hit that moment in your life where you're like, man, like I'm either going to go this way or I'm going to go this way. Hmm. And, like, I got to make a choice and I got to stick with that choice. And so, you know, I was reaching out to people that were close to me. Like, I was going through some stuff, bro. Like, I was – I was, I wouldn't leave my bed for days, bro. Like, I was going through some rough, rough times. And, um, you know, I think just the way – for me, like, I just put my head down, just started really just working out, working out, seeing my daughter. Like, things were starting to be clear to me on, you know, what mattered to me and what didn't. Right, right, because I got felt like I got everything stripped from me at, at one point in my life, and then I was like, okay, I need to take simple steps back to regain, you know, everything in my life. So when I went to Orlando, that was huge for me. Like that was like, man, like I'm back in the league, I'm back on a team, yeah. I'm back around guys. Like I still didn't have my family with me at the time, but like it was a good step for me to see some like positivity and some light. So when I went there, like I just was so grateful, like just to be on a team. You know what I mean? And then ended up playing for them for the next four years. You know, got my fiance back, my family. Like, okay, okay. Every, yeah, yeah, we back. Sure. We back, baby. <laughs> no, no, no. But it was uh but it was a good, it was it was a good learning learning experience for me, bro. Like That's how you become you become yeah. a man, you know, learn from your mistakes and hundred percent. You 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 take them to heart, you know, you acknowledge them and you go like and you move forward. Facts, hundred you know? percent, bro. That's what that's what it's about. Yeah, yeah, for real. So you got your priorities straight. You just like, okay, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, are you a fan of like Disney? You know, we got Robin and Brooke. That you, you go to Disney? Like how? Yeah, I mean, I take I take my kids to Disney. It's just hard, bro. Going to Disney's tough. Like I love, you know, they have so much fun. It's so crowded there, though. Like it, there's a lot of people. Like and living here too, it's tough. Living here, it's like we yeah. see it all the time. So like, but the kids love it, bro. They love the the Disney characters. They have yeah. fun. Like we we go there we go there often. So it's it's cool. Did you, did you already had a house in Florida, or you got a house mm -hmm. when you played in Orlando? So when I my first, my first like six months here, I stayed downtown, closer to downtown. I stayed in a condo, and then I got my house here like two and a half years ago. Yeah. Okay. Okay. D, do you feel like uh, did you have it because of like business, or you was like, no, I want a house. This my this my house. This yeah. Once house. I had the fan, like once I was. You know, I wanted to have my, my kids have a house. You know, it was good. You know, it's good for, you know, tax purposes to live out here. Like, yes. I want my residents to be out here. Yes. You know what I mean? Just so a place to call home and just really build. My kids is in school now. They got friends. They play sports here. Like, so okay. it's been it's been cool, bro. Orlando's been love. Love. Right there. Love. Okay. And we know I know we talked a little bit about business and stuff like that. You, you do. But uh, before I get into that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want you to help me. You know, I've, I've literally I've been doing this thing like that. I ask people like, okay, what is, what is the top three movies, like American movies I gotta watch to understand the American culture, and everybody answers is different, huh? 
I think one. I, I think one easy is coming to America. Coming to America. Okay, I watched. I watched that, I watched that you know one. So I mean? That's good. Like, that's good. Like, that 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 to me is is uh, is is good. American culture though mm. depends what you're trying to get. Like it depends what like American culture is is so is great because it's so diverse. Yes, you know what I mean. So you can get. You know, you can get black culture, you can get Indian culture, you can get white culture, you, can, you know what I mean? So it depends, all depends, but I think coming to America gives a good depiction of like, you know, American culture and somebody being formed from it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, let me think. Yeah, I had I had George Hill tell me, shout out George Hill, man, get him on the pod. Uh, uh, G Hill G Hill said me, uh, you gotta watch Life. Mm. With uh, Eddie Murphy. And Eddie Murphy, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay. That's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. And then um, somebody said, you know, I've had, uh, I don't want to say he's a guest because I don't know if the episode is going to be released by now, but I had another guest who uh, told me, actually, I got to watch, like, uh, Pursuit of Happiness. Mm, Will Smith. Yeah. Will Smith, like, That's a good one. Pursuit of Happiness, yeah. The kind of the, the American dream, mm -hmm. as, as yeah, they say. Yeah, no, for sure. You went, okay. And uh, I had one more question I, I forgot. Ah, who are the top five, like, like, Top five like guards or people you had to def like hardest you had to defend, bro. Kyrie, Steph, Westbrook, Dame. So you said Kyrie. Kyrie, Dame, yeah, Steph, Steph, Russ, Russ, probably D Rose. D Rose, D Rose, early D Rose was crazy. I remember one time I scored layup. Like, you know, like when you get a layup and you follow through out of bounds a little bit. Yeah, right. yeah you know. So I did that. Uh, talking to the ref like. Yeah, yeah, come on. So I did that, gave a little, like, my little trot outside out of bounds. I turn around. D. Rose is at half court, zooming with the ball. I'm like, go. Oh. I was like, yo. Nah, he was tough. D. Rose was tough. He was tough to stay in front of. Okay, D. Rose. Kyrie. Why Kyrie? I mean, I know why, but I want to say I want to hear you. So. Yeah, I think I think what's special about Kyrie is, bro, it's like I, I've cut Kyrie off like three or four times in one possession, and he's still the fifth time. He's still changing direction, bro. So, like, he's got unlimited counters. So, like, when you got you got somebody like that who knows how to create space, and it's weird. Like, he's not a big dude, but, like, he's deceptively strong. Like, And yeah. so when he's able to change direction and use his body to create space, can't stop it, bro. You stop. You can't do yeah, you can't do nothing. He stops on a dime. Like his pull up is is clean. He stops on a dime. So it's like you want to keep him in front, so you give him a little extra room because yeah. he's so shifty. But then he's he's got the pull up, so he he kills you however which way he want. Oh, okay. What's what about Dame? I got him on the team. Dame, Dame's yeah. another one. He's he. I mean, you can't leave him open. And like he he's super strong himself. Yes. So like you try to close out and he can you know, he can get by you. He's athletic and you know, you can't go underneath a screen, like he just makes you pay. You said Dave, you said Kyrie. Mm hmm What about Russ? Russ is the same way. Like he's he's somebody that's always in attack mode. So like you could stop Russ four times in a row and he's at you he's at you the fifth time too. So like he's somebody that consistently is is like making you you know, be on your heels. And, like, for a while, he had the the mid-range going. Like, when he got the mid-range going, he's using the glass, he's getting to the hoop. And he can also affect the game in so many ways, bro. Like, he'll get you 11 assists and 12 rebounds. Yes. Like, it's nothing. That's why I want to ask because you were kind of the guy who would do everything, right? Mm -hmm. And and you said, Russ, like, bro, you see the stat line, like, a couple of days ago, like, 15, 15, something like it was <laughs> – Insane. He had the, the 20, 20, 20. Like, yeah, and that's one thing I, I always try to do when I guarded Russ was, like, I know he loved to go after even, like, defensive rebounds. Yeah. So, like, I would try to, like, make somebody else on his team get their rebound, even on the defensive end. So, like, he would go crash, and, like, I would be right with him trying to even, – even if it's wide open, like, make somebody else, like, at the time, Steven Adams, whoever, yeah. you know, make somebody else get the rebound and then, you know, make him make him then give it to him because as soon as he get the rebound, if he starts getting rebounds and he's pushing the ball up, finding people, getting layups, he's too hard to stop. So, so you gotta like, go find him quick. Yeah, you gotta find him quick. Like not let him just get like rhythm rebounds and bring up the court and find dudes. So, I mean, he's a he's a he's tough, bro. Russ is Russ can hoop. He gets a lot of shit, but like I don't know why though. It's yeah, just, he just, can hoop. Yeah. He can hoop. Okay. Who? I mean, obviously you watch a lot of sports, right? Mm -hmm. 
And apart from basketball, like if you didn't play basketball, what would you play? What sports would you do? <sighs> That's a good question, bro. I watch a lot of MMA and I watch a lot of boxing too. So I probably, you be, I probably, you box? I'll probably be in the mix a little bit. I might be martial arts. Yeah, yeah bro, I, I I watch a lot, and I've watched for a long time too. Like I'm like 15 years deep in 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 watching MMA sports. So. Give me give me your uh, like your top like my top five yeah. fighters. <sighs> Man, I, John Jones. I did have an encounter with him. In uh, so to start it, so we're in Milwaukee. And we go to shout out to Sultan Pettis, man, and the, and Anthony and yeah, the guys yeah, that had an yeah, event. Yeah. And I and I went there, and John Jones was in the building, and we got the sick and next door, and I, you know what I said, just say hi, and I said hi, and and the first thing this guy did, bro, no joke, because we kind of had the same house a little bit, like tall and stuff like that. He just looked at me, he laughed, he was just smiling, hey. and then he was like, like grab, like just sizing me up. I'm like, whoa, what's what's going on? <laughs> He's been sizing me up, but that's just, that's their way of kind of yeah 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 yeah. Like see like all right yeah like yeah just he sizing you up a little bit and, and we were just like up. laughing going back and forth. But he looked like cool dude, bro. Yeah, looked, nah, like John. chill and everything. Yeah. And the other guy like obviously Kamado out like yeah that's my, Usman, that's my dog. Like we yeah, yeah we going back and forth. But that sport is brutal, bro. Sure is, bro. Would you so? How much money would you they need to pay you to like get in the cage, bro? Today in in a year from now. A year from now to you get a train, you got a train, you got to do those things. How much money, bro? Give me well, who? Give me. Ah, that's the question. That's dude. the question. Y'all not getting. Bro. You can't pay me no amount of money to get in with those dudes. Get out. Of here. <laughs> I'm not getting smooth. Who? <laughs> <laughs> who? Who's the most savage when you see when you like look at that those athletes? Well, who's the most savage? You like this guy's? I mean, I'll be probably Justin Gaethje. He, he, he got to fight. fight. He mm-hmm. fights tonight. He fights my man Max Holloway too, man. That's I'm. I might shed a tear watching that fight. I don't, don't want to see neither of them lose. But oh. nah, he's he's a savage, bro. He's violence every night. Every time he fight, there's violence. It's war. crazy. It's war. Some war. people just it's like that. Yeah. Some people. That's, you think you saw that they have like this bonus thing for like? Mm, you see they increase the bonus? Yes. The three hundred thousand. Like yeah, for most like uh, <laughs> like performance is yeah, more there's like a couple, a couple of them. Yeah, like performance of the night, fight of the night, knockout of the night, uh, fight of the night. Like there's a bunch of them, so they're gonna try to take that. Yeah, and you know the 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 and you know the more the the less I mean actually money they have from endorsements, the more they're gonna go for it. So like the more popular that athlete is, he's not gonna be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna risk everything to get mm-hmm. a knockout, risk everything to go to war and make this exciting. But the less you have, yeah, no. you're going for it, right? right? Yeah. Okay, so forget about like all sports in general. Give me like your top. This is all three, not five. Top three. Athletes in general that you like. I say my first one's Muhammad Ali. Yes. Um, that I watched. No, that you like. Oh, oh I that, watch his videos. Yeah, I watch this sometimes. Yeah, I'm yeah, like Muhammad Ali, um, Conor McGregor. Um, I, I read a lot of I read a lot of MJ Kobe books. I read a lot about them. So probably those two. Okay, okay. You started me off with fighting the first two, so I was yeah, like, "Oh, sure, yeah, you I really fight, love, yeah, yeah. you really like, love." For me, it's just like the, it's like the mentality, right? Like I relate their mentality and like you know related to basketball, or whatever, but yeah. like to life, you know itself, right? Like yes. they go through so much, you know, just to prepare for you know twenty five minutes, and like they're you know they're putting their life on the line. Put the like, they, on they the do line. they 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 train. The they got to be so line. sharp, like. I remember just I got a bunch of friends in the in in UFC and you know yeah. other other MMA promotions and stuff and just talking to some of them I remember one told me like I was just asking advice and he was like man like as soon as like in this sport you can never doubt yourself because as soon as you do it's over with like you'll get knocked out see you later your career could be over right so then like I started thinking like man like that's true in all sports like as soon as you soon as you find as soon as you start doubting yourself and it's happened to me before you know what I mean and you know you lose that confidence you not have you to play. You lost confidence in the NBA. Yeah, bro. Yeah, what? absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was tough, bro. Like I said, like playing, uh, there was a bunch of injuries that I was playing through. Like I had, I had six, seven surgeries. Something. I was in the league, like just trying to tell my mind, just my mind telling my body to do something that it it couldn't do, right? Like, and then you know that would affect me on the court how I play, and then you know I let the noise start getting to me, and then like you know just the whole like oh. You had one good season, you had, and then the rest you just disappeared. You know what I mean? Like everything started getting to me, and I was like, 
for a while, like, I cared about it. Like, I'd be going on the court trying to prove myself, like, nah, this is who I am. Like, this is – I'm still that guy. But in reality, I wasn't even in the – I didn't even have the same opportunity that I had then. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying, like – I'm not making No, you didn't. You nothing. didn't. Like, I didn't have that opportunity. I was in a It's like position, how they you know ask guys who – like, oh, my God, you don't play good. Bro, guys are playing five minutes. What you want them to do is score 35, <laughs> five minutes? Yeah. Bro, it's impossible. Yeah. It's impossible. You got to take advantage of whatever facts. you do. Team is winning. Do your job. You know what I'm saying? And, and let's 100%. keep it going. Next one. So, so uh, yeah, yeah, I, I get what you So, mean. yeah, so then like, there was a times where I lost that. And, like, just through mental preparation, just trying to educate myself on the things that I was going through, talking to people, getting help, like, I was able to re restore that confidence and, re you know, restore myself as a human being at the end of the day. Restore myself as a human being. I like that. I like that. Man, man. You know, philosopher Mike. You know philosopher me? Mike. Oh, my God. I, you got to, we got to get out of segment with the uh, philosopher Mike. When you come to the show, we got to get a segment like that, man. Philosopher Mike, you give it a give it a Hey, quote. listen, add me to the podcast. I got I'm with you. you. Say that. <laughs> so, this is going gonna, is gonna to happen. It's going to happen. So, okay. So, okay, let me, let, let's do this. I have uh, so a, then I want to ask something about the philosophy, but we go that we got a, we got a, a segment that's called the uh, animal facts, right? Mm -hmm. And it's true or false, right? No right answer. You got to, you got to, you got to. Figure out if it's true or it's false, right? Let me read this for you. Is it true or false that the sweat of a hippo is blood red? False. It's actually true. Blood red? Blood red, bro. I thought about it. So I was like, how is this true? How is he sweating? You know how scary that is? Yeah, I've never seen that, though. <laughs> They're going to have to show me that. <laughs> uh, it, the internet's undefeated. So they, they, they'll, they'll see it in the comments. Okay, one zero for the analysis. Okay, let me let me let me do let me let's go with this one. Is it true or false? And this is a Florida fact. So it's here in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, is it true or false that a snake can eat an alligator an alligator whole? True. It's true. Yeah, I seen some videos on TikTok videos, huh? of them eating deer. Crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy, bro. Whole alligator. Snakes okay, that's one one. Hey, that's uh, he's done his homework. Okay, 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 okay. Is it true or false that the brain of a jellyfish can shrink so the jellyfish can fit in, into small places? True. Ah, it's actually false. Uh, because jellyfish don't have no brain. Uh, 97%. Oh, I was thinking you said jellyfish. I thought you said a regular fish. No, jellyfish. Yeah, 95%. Okay, okay, okay. I'm made of 95% water, so they don't really have brains like that. Okay, okay, no, it's language battle. No, I gotta give him one more. No, I gotta, it was language battle. My fault, my fault. I gotta give him one more. Come on, hold on. Is it true or false that when in danger, all birds can fly backwards? False. Yeah, it is false. <laughs> Only hummingbirds can fly backwards. No. I didn't even know any birds can fly backwards. <laughs> but hummingbirds, do. hummingbirds can. No, but that's the only not all, not all birds. Okay, that's good. He did well. He did well. He was he wasn't bad. He did well. We, we, give him a we'll grade him in the in the comments. Philosopher Mike, yeah, like tell us, like, what is what is a quote? What is a what is a or maybe a quote, maybe a story? What is something that keeps you going every day? You know, in, in into into basketball, into business, into like something, everything else you do. Yeah, I mean, I read I read a lot of like inspirational books. Um, I read David Goggins' first book. Um, you know, after reading his book, just training your mind like mentally. Um something would that, you would you love would you would you what did you love about david goggins what do you love about him i just love like his mentality bro like he puts himself through so much like stress like his on his body like his mind like yeah. and he just fights through it so like i can imagine like any scenario that he has in life that like he needs to get through like he's able to get through that like with no no problem just because he's built that that mental stability in his in his mind, yeah. right? Like all the marathons he did, all the records that he broke, like from his family, you know, his upbringing of him having you know struggles with his dad, to you know being over being obese, you know, to fighting that, to you know doing everything he did, um, in the in the Marines. No, 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 not in the Marines. He was a Navy in the Navy. Yeah. Um, so you know, going through Hell Week, like just him, you know, explaining, you know, what that looked like and what he had to do, like fighting hypothermia, like crazy stuff. And like his messages, you know, kind of through that is like, you know, how can you just, you know, harden your mind, bro? Like, and that's something that I try to do every day. Yeah. Yes. 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 So. Yeah. Uh, most of the times I, uh, a lot of guys, I, I think I told, 
think it was uh, Giannis or Jerry. So I told somebody, it was like, man, this is, man, this is more and more stuff. And more. I was like, hey, you got broad shoulders, mm. you know? And most of the times when you're mentally stronger, sometimes a lot of more, more things happen and more stuff and you just fight through it because you can. You know, I'm very, I'm, I am religious. I believe in God. And I think like, you know, a lot of things happen for that reason, you know? And, yeah. No, for real. And yeah, look at all through what your family has been through. Yeah, right? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a product of that. You right. know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a product of that, and I really believe that this is, this is why things happen. You know, even Giannis going sure. down, doing all these things, he happens for a reason. Man. It happens for a reason. Okay, but hold on. Okay, so now I have another question. Like, what's, what's Mike off the court, bro? I don't even Mike know. Off the court. I don't even know. I already had all my notes. Like, what's well, I want this, this is calm, calm for me and you? What's Mike off the court? Bro? Mike off the court, bro. I'm just, bro. I'm just trying to take one day at a time, trying to help the people around me, trying to educate people. Just you know, I got so much extra time. So yeah. like, even even with you know Dylan and you know your family the office, yeah, yeah. You're like you know onto Inc. Like. Me and him be lockstep. Like, I'll talk to somebody, and he'll be like, yo, I talked to him last week. Like, or, I'll, you know, I'll have a meeting, and then I'll hop on the meeting with Dylan and be like, yo, this is great communication, great opportunity. So I'm constantly, you know, doing my thing. Like, you know, I'm doing some deals in real estate. I've, you know, diversified my portfolio with, okay. you know, a bunch of different deals. Like, so I'm doing my thing. Like, just just trying to make new partnerships with people. Um you know, I've been, t I talked to a lot of guys still in the league. So like, I've been trying to have like more meaningful conversations with them. Right. Have to, you have you to, this I mean? is what people don't talk about. Like, yeah. Like we talk about everything else. We talk oh. about girls. We talk about, <laughs> we talk about every, every, everything under the moon. But when, when it's finances, when it's deals, when it's that with this, everybody's silent, bro. So I'm like, yo, let's talk about that. Like, like when's the last time you hollered at your financial advisor and was like, yo, like what are the returns? Of, what was my returns yeah, and, looking like? like this, so crazy like you know obviously now it's it's become it's a close circle now but then you know it's opening up now slowly and we'll see how that goes but i'm saying like everybody has a financial advisor when it comes to right and i get that but at the same time like he charges you just to manage your money and to give you like good choices but does he bring deals to the table right does he bring you know what i'm saying does he right. not deals to the, the things that is gonna if you have a goal what's your goal like oh my goal is to make uh Two thousand a month, or ten thousand a month, or hundred thousand, one hundred million. How does he fight for you to get to that? How does he not only with the resources you have, but the resources he has? You know, that's why we created the group, and that's why we did all these things. But what would you say is the most? What did you? But about some of the deals, right? What do you love? Like, what's your love? Like now, obviously, my number one love is basketball, like, mm -hmm. and I like you know I do all my other deals. I'm a businessman. I love business in general. But, you know, I love podcasting too. Like, I like, yeah, like, yeah, because yeah. I'm learning things. Yeah, you know, yeah, every yeah. guest I have, I learn new things and I, and I implement them. And I, and I'm a big believer in learning from your, uh, surroundings, from your environment, you know, not just only from your experience, but like what's going on in your life. Um, so what do you love outside of like about investments? Or what, what's the specific thing? Is it real estate? Is it that, what, it, like, yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's, it's probably real estate and private equity, bro. Why? Like, Honestly, it started with me just, like, diving into my own stuff, bro. Like, yeah. my own finances. Like, yo, like, I can't just be swiping the American Express, like, no, like, like, I got endless amount of money, right? Like, I was like, I need to budget myself. Like, I need to, you know, dive in, like, really know what I'm spending, know what's what. So, like, I, once I started doing that, and I was like, man, like, a lot of my money is just in stocks and bonds and, like, you know, I'm not diversified. Like, I've always wanted to get into real estate. I've always wanted to look at private equity yes. deals. So I'm like, I got to start from somewhere, right? So, you know, I started that um, adventure of, of going down the yes. line and figuring out what even, you know, what real estate even means or what private equity even means, right? And so, um, you know, went down that avenue. Every, things are going well. Like, I'm doing a lot of different things. I know, I know. They, 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 they keep me posted. They keep me posted. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, I know so, you do your so, thing, bro. So, like... Now nah, y'all are doing your thing too. I hear, I hear in the family. I, I be like, I be like, okay, dude, talk dude, to this dude. Fine, I know what they are doing. Nah, y'all are, y'all are, y'all are helping a lot of people out, bro. For real. So, thank you, thank you. That's 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 dope. But okay, so you do that and and raising my kids too, bro. Like that's yeah. one thing. Like I'm like my my kids are old enough to play. Well, my daughter, she's five, so we play sports. She got jujitsu three times a week. She she hoops. She does gymnastics. So like I'm taking her to all these different things, and I'm just. Like watching her grow. Same thing with my son. Like, he's he's in swimming lessons, and um, we got a, he's in jujitsu as well. He just got his first strike. Oh, the shit. by the way, uh, quick side note. You know, like uh, 
the youth sports are like a forty billion uh, dollar business. That's just okay. a, just a side note, just a side note. Uh, not not to keep it. And I yeah no, I got my own nonprofit, my own nonprofit organization. Um, what, what is it? What is it called? Michael, Michael? And uh, MCW Stars. MCW? Yeah yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's a it's an AAU program. We got about fifteen girls teams. Like my mom, she runs the whole thing. She does her thing too. Like, good good good. She does she does a lot. So. Where I'm helping out a lot more with that, like you know, looking for funding, grants, all that type of stuff. So, where uh, I'm, oh, you know, definitely come my way, obviously. But uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Way, obviously, but yeah, I got you. I know I'll hit you up. Be like, yo, I know them pockets heavy now. <laughs> hey, 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 no, no, no. But, <laughs> but like, most definitely, I got you. Anything you need, you know this. But okay, I know not to ask Giannis though. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pockets is tight. Nah, 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 it's nah, tight, man. He's just, no. he just been. Saying. But I'll, I'll, you know what I'll say? What's your What's the stupidest things you've ever you've ever bought, bro? You were like, ah, oh, shit, why did I buy this one? I want to say that house in Milwaukee, but I loved that house in Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it could be anything. It could be like, why did I buy this? I, whatever. It could be a car, this, that, whatever. Yeah, it was probably cars. I probably bought some cars that I was like, it was just unnecessary, didn't need to buy. And what's the best purchase you've ever had? <sighs> a house in Orlando. House in Orlando. Yep, yep. House in Orlando. I feel I feel like the, the you know the conversation we're having and you know we never talk about this a lot. I feel like that. Are you in a state of peace and just like tranquility and just family time? And I'm that's why you said you're having a lot yeah. of good time. Yeah, I'm a chilling, lot of fun. With the I'm fam. chilling. I'm chilling. I got some things in the work that I'm trying to go yeah. get back on the court with. Yeah. Um. But yeah, now nah, I'm 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 you know enjoying enjoying family time. Yeah, and and you said this and you keep saying in Orlando and my and our house and everything it feels like that house and. Your families give you peace, bro. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. It's good to see. It's good to see that. I think people don't understand that how like in uh, how much turmoil that that is in into sports and and going back and forth and you're traveling every day and you got to play from city to city and you know everybody gets to tweet at you and oh, yeah. mention you on Instagram every other day because you're playing every other team and. You don't get the time to kind of figure out what's your priority. And once you get in this state and you see your yeah. family and kids and until then like it becomes Yeah. I mean bro, throughout my throughout my nine, ten years in the league, bro, I done seen some of the wildest situations, like just like so much so many so many crazy things that happen to everybody in the league when they sure. play, like, right? So many emotions up and down to just well, oh, wait, but what for you okay, but what would be what's the most craziest things you've ever seen? <laughs> no, I'm saying that you ever felt that you were like, no, 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 this no. is you never. Because now, like, you're just, like talking about this, and I feel like yeah, the craziest season I've ever been a part of was Chicago, for sure. Like, that was when we had Jimmy, D Wade, Rondo, Bobby, like, Nico. Like, oh, that was... shout out to Bobby. Mm. Shout out to BP, man. BP, my dog. Man, I don't know if this would come out after the voting or before the voting, but six man of the year, man. Yeah. Six come man on. of the year, bro. Come on. The man, hope, BP's man. A, BP's tough. <laughs> BP can hoop. But anyway, yeah, bro, I remember, like, and and I, I love Jimmy. Jimmy's a great dude, but this this is crazy, bro. Like, one day, um, we just had, like, our locker room was bad, bro. Like, we, we know, it was right in the beginning of the year, too. Like, okay. it was, like, our first three games, like, we lost. And, like, they were, like, everybody was pissed off, like, upset. Like, Jimmy wasn't getting along with Coach Hoiberg. Like, so we had a team meeting early, right? <laughs> So we getting That's crazy to have a team meeting. No, we had, that we, early, we had a team meeting right off the rip. Like, so then we uh, everybody's in the locker room. Everybody's silent. Coach Holberg goes, "All right, guys." By, by the way, with the side note, I know you wanted to say something, but the, for the audience and people are listening, to understand is what it means. Team meeting it means like just the players to be like, "Yo, we got to get our ish together. We got to get our stuff together." No, and this was like usually, the whole. This was like the whole squad, like the oh, whole team, oh, like okay, okay, coaches, okay. everybody. Yeah, this was the like it wasn't even just a regular just player yeah, meeting. Yeah. It was the whole team, right? Coach Hoiberg starts it off. He's like, "All right, Jimmy. Obviously, this starts with me and you. Like, what's going on?" And so, <laughs> and so, but last game, right? Last game, the refs were terrible. Like, Jimmy got a tech. Like, somebody else got a tech. I think even Taj Gibson got a tech that game. He don't really get cool to. Vet. Jimmy was upset. Right, that that coach Hoiberg ain't get a tech. You know, players get upset if your coach feel like you're not. Definitely, that's like, that's, that's a, a must. thing. One like, of all, yeah, you definitely gotta do that. So so right, so coach Hoiberg is like Jimmy. Like this starts with me and you. Like, what's going on? And then Jimmy goes, "Well, one, I think you're soft. Two, I don't like you." And he didn't even get to three. And 
<laughs> Coach Hoiberg was like, well, then fuck you, Jimmy. And Jimmy's like, ah, oh, it's fuck me now. You wanted to know what I want. <laughs> you wanted to know how I felt. So that's how the meeting started, bro. And I'm sitting over in the corner. I'm like, no. Oh, my God. I'm like, no. I've never heard this in my entire life. I'm like, wait, bro. wait. I'm like, what? Like, and he's like, so they're like, and then the assistant coaches in the background, they're like, oh my God. Oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> yo. And so they just like, Jimmy, a good dude. Like, Jimmy, nah, Jimmy's a good dude, but yeah, like, but like yeah, yeah, like, I, it was frustrating. You gotta, gotta be a winner. Though. You respect that. You no, you gotta be. You gotta be. You gotta be. And you, and you know his personality. Like, you, you gotta, if you're a coach, you gotta be a fight. Like, you gotta fight. Like, you gotta show like that passion, whatever. So, no, nah, that was that was that was crazy. Um, so what, what did everybody do then? After? Everybody was just like, like really nobody knew what to say because like we were like that's it just like it just popped off crazy like that like off like right away. So then I guess like you know some of the coaches spoke like we can't have this we got to be on the same page like you know other guys spoke and like it, it was tough because like I said we was losing so it wasn't looking good for us like early. So they was. Yeah, no, nah, that was one of the craziest things I've ever seen, like, in the locker room, like, just straight out, like, like, you're soft, <laughs> and I don't like you, straight up and down, like, I was like, yo. Oh, God. Nah, that oh. season, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff that year. And then, okay, so how did the season end? Like, how did... Honestly, bro, it ended good, like, if we didn't, if Rondo didn't get hurt against the Celtics, we would have won that series, bro. We was up 3-0, I think. Two zero, two zero, three zero. That and we was we was hooping, bro. And then Rondo went out, and we had the whole game plan like figured out. He went out. It just it just messed up our whole. What was the game plan? What was the like the? We started to do um, actually, J. Kid ran it a lot too. You know when like the point guard dribbles up to the wing, they hit the elbow, and they just play out of that splits, set yeah. splits. They yeah. play out of splits, right? So we just played all these different types of actions out of splits, and they would have a hard time covering it because they they really couldn't switch with Isaiah Thomas. So like Rondo would always be in the, the split action and we were just we just started flowing off that. And you know, Rondo's like, you know, he figures like he watches film, he figures the game out, it's gonna be a long night for you guys. And he can get the ball yeah. to D Wade and Jimmy. So we had it we had it figured out, like we were playing real well and they were a great team though. Like they they were they started hooping too. So gotta give credit to them. They was balling, I can't lie. IT was hooping. <laughs> Shout out to the IT. He just signed. Max, so I was so happy to see that. I was just working out with IT this summer. I was happy to see him sign. Bro. Oh my god, they man. I'll tell you one thing. Like I'm, I'm still crying from the Jimmy thing. Oh my god, I'm in tears. <laughs> uh, like you know, I don't know him personally. I haven't like met him, but like I seen his video online. I seen YouTube and mm -hmm. the reaction he had when he got traded and this that and like. The way he was hooping and how they did him, like, bro, I get the nature of the business. I'm a businessman, bro. I understand. Yeah, business I is business. And, and when you up there, like when you're in this side of the business, you better use it. When you're inside of the business, you better figure it out. But at the same time, like, there is some etiquette to it at some point. Yeah, there is, yeah, there no, is, there some, is some, there is some, like. You know what I mean? There is some, like, yeah. nobility to it to a certain degree. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah, no, that was crazy. The things that he went through was tough. Like, but I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy, bro. I'm I'm very full. Like I'm like, and, and this is guys. If you guys, uh, you know, this is the prime example of like perseverance and just stick with it. Stick with it. And he find his way next year as well, and like moving forward. So like, I hope stick so. With I hope it. it's yes, six sir. for real. Yes, it will. Man, I was just laughing that I was actually because you said crazy thing and the way you did your face. I had to ask you. Like I'm like, nah, I, gotta, I can't face like this. You said it. He's like, nah, yeah. It was just a bunch of like. It's just there's just a bunch of stories that like, you're just like yo I can't believe I can't believe this is going on. But you oh but the, okay but you didn't play with JP when you were left before JP came. Mm -hmm. I left. Ah, I was only with, yeah I was only with Hoiberg. It's crazy I got to see you guys play all of you guys together. You oh you talking about JP coming to Milwaukee? Party? Coming no coming to Chicago because oh, JP okay, went okay. to Chicago. Yeah after yeah, 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 no, he did. yeah yeah yeah. And when you guys played like it's. I feel like you know my, I was watching my brothers play. Like you guys were playing together, playing together, and 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 the crazy part is like went from a Milwaukee went from a fourteen win, fifteen or whatever win to forty one to fifty, and then and then I, like been top tier since then. You know? Yeah. No, you could see it though. Like you could yeah. see it. Like 
it was crazy. Like, even watching Giannis play early when he was young, like, you could see that, like, he would have, like, six to ten plays where you're like, yo, that was crazy, right? And those six plays turned into 15, then they turned into 20, like, the yeah. things that he was doing on the court. And you're just like, yeah, like, once he does this more consistently, it's over. It's like, it's yeah. a wrap. But you you lived it. You was, like, close to him and worked yeah. out with him and, and all these things. And, and, I, and I was thinking about, like, okay, if, if Philly's – Model was trust the process, right? What is what was what was Milwaukee model would be called? Like freak. Nah, nah, nah. The freak. Nah, nah, nah. nah, 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 nah. The, the nah they stayed course like though. Yeah, the evolution. Like they 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 stuck with their guns. Like I don't know what what else yes, to yes. call it. Like they had they had um they had Chris for a while. Like yeah. they had like and they always built. They had good supporting cast. Like they brought Zaza Pachulia in there. Like just good mentors. Like OJ Mayo. Yeah. So like they they always were able to fill like those spots with dudes that were like could really teach. Like they had John Henson. John Henson was like an important Mr. Piece. Hook. Like, yeah, Mr. Hook. Like <laughs> him and Giannis used to go at each other like in practice all the time. Like you know what I mean? Like Michael Beasley. Like dude. Like they had they had good dudes oh, in there. You, you saw Michael Beasley. Shout out to OG's uh, mm -hmm. podcast too. The OGs, uh, you don I gotta get you Don and Mark. I gotta do one with them. They, they, who, they got stories for days, and they, don't, they like, you they are unfiltered too. I like, I love that. Um, so they, they had him on the pod. He was talking about like playing ones and one on ones and how people, how like you, people he beat. And I remember he was we were walking. I remember, bro, I had some plays with him. I was like, bro, this guy is incredible. Like, who is this guy? Because you know, I don't, I, I didn't grow up here, so I didn't follow the. AU program, the the colleges, the Baltimore, the the uh, you know like Maryland mm -hmm. or like stuff like I, didn't, I I couldn't because I'm not from here, but to see him and then find out like hey, him and KD, him and this guy, I'm like bro. Oh. Nah, yeah, nah, he was he, he's nice. He's can who especially in ones, he's tough. I played against him in ones like last summer or something like that. Like he's he's tough. He's just tough. I watched him in high school. I watched him really? in high school. Yeah, I went to I went to go watch a game. Um, he was killing. He had him and uh, this kid named Walker, his lat Billy Walker, something like that, on his team. He was he was hooping. They were balling. They were, he was nice. He's in high school, college, league. He you got, you guys have this ranking system too too early I, too early for me. I feel like the yeah. ranking system. Yes, because how do you determine this guy was fourteen years old that he's gonna be top one hundred in the country? Yeah. And then all of a sudden. Not too many guys hold that spot too. Like there's guys you know I mean? when I was younger that like were ranked like number one and two and like. You don't even they exactly. not even play nowhere. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I it's, mean, it's just a probably a business somebody made up, try to capitalize off of. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I can see that. I can see that. What do you think about the NIL deals now, <sighs> bro? It's crazy. Like, I was talking. I talked to. Were you just stayed in college. If, if, if when I was. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, not maybe not my sophomore year, but like, I don't know. I don't know what the money would would have looked like. Like just like now. Yeah. No, nah, I mean. I would have been my nil deal would have been would have been nice though. Would have been straight, right? Yeah, it would have been straight. <laughs> but it's crazy because I talk to kids like I hear I hear about kids that are like, nah, I'm not going there unless I get like 70, 70 k. I'm like, damn, like seventy k, right? That's, that's a, like that's a whole salary. Like people got to pay now for your kid not to transfer. Oh, I'll transfer unless I don't get fifty k. <laughs> like it's crazy. I'll hit the portal. Yeah, but at the same time, I, I get the whole like. Uh, you know, where's the love for the for the school? Mm -hmm. Like, I want to be, I wanted to be an Indiana Hoosier. I wanted to be a, a Louisville. You know, I wanted to be the Baylor. I wanted to mm -hmm. be like Syracuse, and but at the same time, or Duke, or whatever. But at the same time, like, how much money have they made throughout the whole year? Like, it's they it's time. A, it's been time, right? Yeah. It's about that's time. that's never that's never public. That's never public though, right? Like, how much the schools make? It's yeah, always it's, done with the players. How much does the school make? Selling Patrick Ewan's jersey, still, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know if they do, but I'm, I'll yeah. just give an example. People's, people's opinions would feel a lot different if they saw that. Exactly, it would be a lot different if you show the business. I'm just talking about we're talking about me and you were talking about the business side of right, it. Right, right. But I'm saying like it would be totally different because now you get to see like kids that are making, and that's seventy thousand. Probably is nothing. Right. But the crazy part is, it's not just the top tier guys. Now it, it it's everybody. everybody. That's everybody what I'm saying. It's now. everybody. Like, those those twelve men is like, hey man. Yeah, like where's my money at? <laughs> Where my cheese at, right? <laughs> Listen here, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm from Africa. I'm I, need <laughs> I need that. Need it. Oh my God. Okay. 
I'm sorry, I know I know it's gonna keep me short, but man, talking to you, we can talk for like two or three hours. Nah, facts. But no, no, I need another one. Maybe maybe Milwaukee or Greece or somewhere. You know what I'm saying? I'm with it. Yeah, we big can sit down, fan. big tux at Giannis's wedding. I'm gonna be yeah. in there like this. <laughs> Come through, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Get it in, and and then we'll talk a little bit more on, on the business side and other yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Sure. But I appreciate you so much. Thank you for having me. You know, for like. So. Come to the show. Uh, please, can you tell us our socials? I want people to follow you. Oh, comment. please, yeah, follow me. Uh, M. Carter Williams on the gram. That's all That's all I need. <laughs> the <man. laughs> on the gram. I'll support his journey, man. It's been incredible. Yep. Cool dude. Even cooler if you meet him. I'm yeah, close, man. I'm, 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 you know me, bro. I'm willing to meet anybody. What up? Yeah. What we doing? Yeah, and uh, it's been amazing. Thank you so much. For, like, first of all, you're one of my brother's best friends, and you are my, our, our friends. So, like, it's dope to... He's talking about you so much all the time, like, hey, Mike, this, this, that. I'm like, man, I gotta sit down with him. I've met, we've met, but like, I wanna yeah, sit down yeah, with yeah. you and like, no, for real, yeah. Uh, chop it up with you. I appreciate you so much. And again, the show is coming to an end. If you guys wanna subscribe, subscribe on YouTube channel and the YouTube, uh, Thanalysis show, please like it, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. Uh, Man, it's been amazing. Uh, if you want to follow in the socials, then I'll let you show the socials. Twitter, TikTok, whatever, Facebook, etc. You guys have been amazing. Keep supporting. Uh, thank you guys so much. And again, then I'll let you out. Analysis is recorded at No Studios, Milwaukee's creative hub and production studio.